So let's go into the uh, the strategy right now. I know you guys, and we, and just again, full disclosure, we both have uh, a business in the same sort of area. We're both doing question and answer. We both realize that that's a, a really interesting space where a lot of innovation should occur. Yeah. And as I told Fred when I congratulated him on the deal, I said, really, Joel, Cora, and Vark, and Mahalo are really the only people who are innovating in the Q&A space. Yahoo Answers, eh, right. they haven't innovated that product in years, and it's got 300 million no. people globally, so obviously there's a big opportunity here. Um, yeah, yeah, Yahoo Answers is the only one I would really talk about specifically, and they're a chat room. Uh, yeah. If you look at what's going on in Yahoo Answers, it's a chat room for teenage girls. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not monetizable. It's not answers. It's a chat room. Yeah. Um, the other um, that's why they have so much traffic, and now that's also why 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 it monetizes so poorly, um, which is what you would expect from a chat room. Um, the other ones I can't really say that much about. There, I see them as more direct competitors. I think I see Mahalo as as being one of the most active uh, right now. But um, but you keep trying to pay people to provide answers. And until you stop doing that, you're just not going to compete, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's interesting. Uh, the, the virtual currency uh, is an interesting driver. Um, I guess we just turned the interview around. Um, <laughs> but it is but only one driver. Uh, I was like, yeah, Back wow. To me. Back to me. But actually, <laughs> you had a very good point. You had a very good point on one of your podcasts, which was you should pay the people who write questions. And mm -hmm. we actually did do that. We have started uh, sharing the virtual currency, the AdSense revenue, with the people asking questions. <laughs> and some people are yes, making 100 mahalo dollars for asking a great question. So that was uh, something that, that, that you is, hit on the same time. It's the quality of the questions. It really is. Yesterday, I went on to Answers.com just for kicks. And the number one question up there uh, today, and I don't really see them as a, uh, well, I guess they're in the space, right? Answers.com. They have sort of a wiki answers kind of uh, product. And, and uh, the question I found up there was, what is it like in Texas? And the answer was, Texas is a country. And the whole thing surrounded by Google Ads, absolutely plastered yeah. with completely irrelevant Google AdSense. The quality of that page might be possibly the lowest quality page on the internet today. <laughs> I mean, it would be hard to make something worse than that because it didn't even have entertainment value. I uh, concur, I concur. And so your strategy is you have the three sites that are getting six or seven million people on a global basis, very impressive start. Um, and they're all technical based. You had people uh, being able to pay to create their own uh, Q&A sites, like a white label product, which we have one as well. Didn't work out so well. You sort of reeled that back in and now you're yep. gonna just build your own vertical ones like sort of a Weblogs Inc. of, or a Gawker of Q&A sites. Um, that was the way we started uh, at the beginning of the VC pitch. By the time we got to the end, we had figured out the strategy a lot better. Um, the, the model now, um, I, I mean, this is a classic, what everybody's calling a pivot, right? Like, hey, hey that sure. model's not working. Let's change something else. Um, you know, the, the, the white label model was clearly not working. Um, we got out of that a handful of pretty decent sites that are, that are nice sites where people get good answers, but we only got mm, one maybe site that's really killing it, and that's mathoverflow.net, uh, which is the number one site by far for math PhDs to ask really, really hard questions about math uh, at, at the PhD uh, level. And it's just got enormous traffic and enormous traction in that very narrow, very technical niche, and that's what we consider to be a great site. That's what we're excited about, not teenage chat and not what is Texas like. We're looking for, you know, differential equations being the minimum uh, level of, of, of entry, right? So uh, th that model wasn't really working. We w certainly want to keep alive any sites that were built under the first model. We're going to keep them alive. We're not even going to charge them. And um, we, you know, we'll protect those sites for as long as we can um, and as long as they continue to add some value. But going forward, what we really want to do is let the community figure out what else they want to do Q&A about. And we're going to build a site. Right now, you can see sort of the genesis of this happening at Stack Exchange, where pretty much anybody can go and say, hey, wouldn't it be awesome to have a Q&A site about statistics, about data visualization, about GIS systems, about uh, guns, about uh, tax, tax law? And uh, those topics are proposed and discussed. And the ones that seem to have a lot of traction through a completely democratic and automated process will just get created. Uh, you can see uh, the, the sites you're, you're scrolling through right there on the Stack Exchange list. Um, those ones are um, uh, sites that were created under the, the initial rules of Stack Exchange. Right now, if you go to meta, M-E-T-A dot stackexchange.com, you'll see a whole bunch of conversation going on about, hey, what other sites should we create? Um, these meta Stack Exchange sites, uh, these new Stack Exchange sites are going to be owned by the community. They're not going to be owned by an entrepreneur and an individual paying us money. They're going to be owned by the community. The content in them is going to come from the community. It's going to be Creative Commons licensed. And uh, uh, each of these sites uh, will basically get created. We'll host it. We'll sponsor it. And um, what we're trying to do is make 
uh, a big old network where people can have very, very technical conversations, very, very detailed, long tail questions uh, um, amongst experts. You've been watching This Week in Startups. To watch the full episode, click here. To check out some other shows from This Week in, click here.